Mr. James Turner. He will talk us about getting cute on Mac, some cool stuff about you know all Mac lovers as seen around. So please, uh, some applause for Mr. James Turner again, please. So yes, having been introduced, I'm now going to talk about myself because obviously that's useful. Um, but quickly, we're going to talk about you guys in a second. That's more fun. Uh, the key point here is I've been a Mac developer for longer than I've been a Qt developer. I was a Mac developer first, before I was a Qt developer. I've been a Mac developer for 16 years, since I was 14 years old or something, or 16 years old now. Um, and that means I've been using Mac for a long time. Uh, I've been using classic Mac, Mac OS 7, 8, 9. I've used Carbon. I've used Cocoa. I've used Qt. I've used iOS natively. Uh, and yes, in parallel with some of that, I've been uh, using Qt on the Mac, using Qt on other platforms, and also doing some contrib contributions to Qt on some of those platforms. So yes, uh, but Mac's kind of in my blood, uh, and that's really where I come from. Uh, so we're going to talk a bit, a bit more about how that affects th this presentation in a minute. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to talk about why you're here, and you know what. I mean, what we mean by Qt on the Mac, because Qt's cross-platform toolkit, Qt compiles on the Mac, your Qt applications run on the Mac, fine. Um, we're going to basically talk about, about the problems that you'll get from Mac users and Mac reviewers with your application, uh, and ways to work around them, and what different, different expectations about how an application might work on the Mac. Uh, and yes, basically go through what you might be facing as a Qt developer targeting the Mac. We're going to look at some fixes, which are mostly bottom-up things. So there are things you can change now in your application to make it more Mac-friendly, Mac-compatible, make people send you fewer emails complaining about it. Uh, we're going to talk about if you're starting from the top down, how you would you know, think about the Mac when you have a new program or a rewrite or, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's like a, the, the ideal thing, but probably less useful if you already have a large code base. And we're going to talk about uh, some deployment and ecosystem issues, which kind of, again, are even more global and high level, uh, and yes, help you kind of be a, a good Mac citizen. So most importantly, we have some questions for you guys. I'm going to do this probably shows of hands. Um, so why are you here? What, what, what's your expectation from this? So first of all, who uses a Mac? Raise your hand. OK, that's one and a half. Okay. Of all those people, are you running Mac hardware or Mac OS 10? So if you're, if, you, if you're a cheater and using Windows or Linux on booting it, put your hand up now. OK, that's a good st OK, get out of the room. Leave, go on. Uh, OK, so Andre, if you're using Mac, you're here, you work on a Mac. Of the people developing on the Mac, how, are any of them I'm going to not targeting the Mac with their cute applications? Because that's quite, right, OK, so exactly. Um, that's the, I want to work on the Mac because it's nice and a fun environment. But actually, my company doesn't care about cute, uh, Mac. They only care about Linux or Windows or maybe embedded. OK, so who here is deploying to Mac? OK, that, that's actually pretty, I was expecting that to be a bit lower than develops on Mac. That's good. Um, what else is on my list here? Oh, sorry. Uh, who here, when, it, when they're creating their app, knew they were going to be deploying to Mac when the app was designed? OK, that's much less. That, okay, that, that's like a third of the people who are deploying for Mac now. So that means two thirds of you had to sort of port a Linux or Windows program to the Mac, I'm guessing. And that's what a lot of this is going to be about. So the third who knew about the Mac up front, you're the lucky third, because you were able to think about your UI design and your structure knowing Mac was going to be there. Um, so the, I guess the other really interesting historical one, who used a Mac uh, with something prior to Qt 4? Uh, <laughs> OK, so you people probably should get a sweetie now at some point, or some kind of you know token prize for going through the pain of Qt 3 Mac or before. Um, so yeah, that's I'm trying to break down some structures of where you're coming from. Uh, and a lot of things I'm going to talk about are uh, changing your design in small ways or big ways. So. You're going to look at me like, well, he's telling me to make my program less portable. He's telling me to add if defs to, you know, specialize things. And the problem is that Mac users are fussy. We're talking about more general. So yes, 
motivation. Your Qt GUI is already cross-platform. You're using Qt to cross-platform toolkit. Uh, all your functional code, your business logic, your SQL code, your XML code, your networking is portable. Fine. Q widgets. We have a, a Q Mac style. Buttons look like Mac buttons. Scroll bars look like Mac scroll bars. Uh, check boxes look like Mac check boxes. Uh, and including some, some hints, fine. OK, we're done. Ship on the Mac. Finished. No problem. We have a Mac version. No. <laughs> um, so this was the kind of the, 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 kind of the easy thing if you're not thinking. The problem is this guy. I, I wanted to get an even better quote, but I had to be something that was polite. Uh, it just doesn't feel right. It's not native. Um, yeah, lots of you know feedback from people who are, yes, very focused on feel rather than functionality. They don't care about how many features your program's got. They don't care about how elegant your algorithms are. They don't care about how efficiently you solve the problem or any of that stuff. They care about what your icons look like. And if the icons don't look like Mac icons, they will pan you and not buy your stuff and bitch about you on the App Store and on Reddit and on Facebook and on Twitter and everywhere. Because they're very vocal people. They're annoyingly noisy people. Like me. Uh, <laughs> so yes, Mac users, they are pixel picky. They care about one gray line in the wrong place uh, or one bit of transparency that doesn't look right. They care about spacing. They care about icons and fonts, all visual details. And the problem is that they don't really know what they want, like most people. Um, but what is they've got in their head and in their subconscious an idea of what the Mac is to them that they've picked up from using Safari and Keynote and Apple Mail and Aperture and maybe Pages and those applications and just the OS. Uh, and that's going to build into their brains. And when they use a Qt app, by default, it feels subtly wrong because the spacing is a little bit different and the, the size are a bit different. And um, many small things are not the same as they would be in, in, in a Cocoa app. So that means what they're really asking you to do is to imitate the Apple applications, which is what, in one sense, you should do. Uh, that's a bit tricky because Apple are not as consistent as they might have you believe, uh, particularly in a few areas. Uh, so they're asking you to, that they, that what they're looking for, in one sense, is not to realize it's written using Qt. They, they want it to just be like Keynote uh, and Mail Aperture. And it isn't just Qt apps that suffer from this. So do Microsoft apps and Adobe apps. Adobe was regularly panned for not being Mac-like for a while. They've improved that. Office for the Mac has been through various iterations of UI changes to try and keep the Office feel, but still be, act like a Mac application. And Microsoft have improved that a lot. So the, so the key thing is this perception of differences is subconscious. If you put people in a UI lab and ask them to write down what's wrong with it on the Mac, you may get totally misleading answers. They might latch on to one detail and because people aren't good at explaining verbally what their brain is seeing that's cueing them that this isn't a native application. So it's quite a hard user design capture problem to really understand what, what feels wrong. I call this, um, there's a thing called the uncanny value in computer, in, in computer graphics where something is almost right, but therefore the differences between what's almost right and really correct stand out more. And that's definitely true of Qt. Because Qt tries hard to look like a Mac application, the little things that are left that aren't right stand out much more and, and can be spotted quickly. So I didn't actually put it on the slide, but there's a good thing. There's the time to realize a program was written in Qt on the Mac. Uh, for example, Google Earth on the Mac. Uh, you certainly used to use Qt. I think it still does. And the issue is you can tell, or I can tell within about two seconds, because the first time it loads, I look at that button and go, that's a Qt tool button. It looks wrong on the Mac. It's got a, a two pixel shadow and no Mac button would ever have a two pixel shadow. It's a cute app. Same with the Perforce client and some other things. Um, so the time to, to, to work out it's a cute app is you're kind of what you're trying to maximize. So I hope people use it forever and not realize it's a cute app. That's probably not going to happen, but hopefully you can get further in than two seconds or two minutes. So the problem is this is all adding time and effort and therefore expense, uh, or you know, cer certainly effort, hope probably expense. So we need a bit of justification here for you know, why it's worth caring about this stuff. 
Um, the really good one is you need to basically consider your, your UI and your user experience in a lot more detail. You can't just casually throw some dialogues together in Designer, drag some buttons on, put it to layouts and ship. You need to sort of really step back and say, you know, what should be in my UI? What, what kind of visual layout are we going for? You know, really think in detail and probably not by engineers, but by UI design experts or visual, visual design experts about what your UI should be structured like. And that's good on all platforms. I mean, that's not, not, not a Mac thing. That's just a, it's something you should probably do, but you probably neglect because it's someone else to hire to get in to go and do a user interface review that takes time and money and, yeah. Uh, but there is one really good rule, which again, Linux is really bad for, Windows is quite bad for, um, which is that in UIs, less is always more. So uh, the, the classic example here is Apple presentation tool I'm using right now, Keynote, has about one-tenth of the features of PowerPoint. Uh, it's also one-tenth of the price. Uh, but it does all the things you need in a, in a presentation tool, because PowerPoint has all these features no one ever uses, and the same for Word and lots, many other programs. So in general, uh, the way to have a better UI and an easier UI on the Mac is to have less UI and less stuff. Um, and that usually that means having, and that also makes you need to have less things to write and maintain and fewer bugs to fix, hopefully. But I'm going to sort of repeat a lot of times, you know, have, have less stuff. And obviously you'll be like, well, no, I need these 20 buttons. And the answer is you probably don't need those 20 buttons. You probably need five buttons or four or three, maybe. Uh, if you think you need 20 buttons, you're thinking like an engineer, probably. And you need to redesign your user interface on a much more fundamental level to not need 20 buttons. Um, I'm going to summarize as engineers design terrible user interfaces. And this is, I would say, consistently true. Uh, you know, the engineers are thinking from the bottom up. They're thinking about functionality. They're thinking about algorithms. They're thinking about data. They're not approaching it from the user view, and thinking about UI flows, UI structures that actually make sense. Sometimes they do, but it usually just get, they get lucky. But I have two much more facetious points here that might be actually be more relevant which is that your CEO, marketing and salespeople might well use Macs. Uh, and especially irritating media people almost certainly use Macs. So, if, so that might mean that, it depends on your market, of course, if you're working in a vertical scientific market, this might not be true. But if you're targeting the consumer space, there's a good chance that your senior people use Macs. Uh, and there's an aspect of this I've seen in, in genuine meetings. They tend to latch onto user experience issues above technical ones. So if they think your icons suck, and they might if they're just regular icons and they're running on the Mac, they might not care about a genuine bug that's really serious, because all they can see is that bad icon. So in order to get them over their kind of mental process of, you know, that the UI looks wrong to them, you might have to do that before you can fix real bugs. That just, I mean, that, that's a psychology problem and a presentation problem as well. But it, it, it's a genuine point. I, I've been in meetings where someone who, you know, if this was costing real money, was latching onto a two-pixel line being in the wrong place over and above major, you know, issues with a, a file server, let's say. I mean, this is, this is not a made-up example. I mean, it's just because they couldn't get past that, that visual issue. So hopefully you justify thinking about your UI for the first reasons, but you might end up justifying it for the second set of points there. So there is a lazy option, which is to do nothing, um, which is sort of the default cute option. Um, you could tolerate a UI that works, it looks okay, it's completely usable, uh, and you didn't have to do any extra work and maintenance. And in certain markets, that might be fine. You know, if, if you're using it in a place where your Mac users don't really care about the presentation of the app, it's just, you know, you need to be careful to say, I could, I, could, I could say point of sale, but it's still, you might care about visual experience. I could say science and engineering applications, but again, that's still a generalization. Some markets, you might be able to say, we just don't care how it looks. Um, but Mac users are ungrateful a lot, like me, and you will get emails and Facebook posts and whatever else communication forms you have, forums of Mac users, and they'll end every bug report with, and the UI looks crap on the Mac, as well as their real complaint. I mean, they're just ungrateful people. They'll just basically spam you with moaning about the fact it doesn't feel like a Mac program. And if you have reviewers, they will be extremely unkind. Don't expect Mac reviewers to be grateful that you did a bad port. It was just an, like, hey, they will not be grateful, they will pan you completely and utterly. They want a port, and they want it to look as good as what Apple would have made. 
for that particular problem. That's their entry bar. It's not, oh, we're glad it works at all. That will get you killed. Um, and crucially, when some kid comes along and writes a native Cocoa version that has one tenth of your features and ten times as many bugs, but looks like a Cocoa application, they'll buy that instead over your functional correct one. Because, and then you, if you look at, look at the app store, you'll see this really happening. I mean, <laughs> this is all about the psychology of minorities as well, by the way, but let's not get into that. <laughs> There's another option. You could go wild. You could forget about doing a Mac UI and use a custom UI on all platforms. Uh, and other markets, this might actually be the correct solution. You could do a totally custom uh, queue style or style sheet uh, or indeed build a cute quick UI. And that's basically what most games do. Um, so here's an example that I built, or myself and a colleague built. Uh, this is running on the Mac. Actually, this one isn't, but it looks, trust me, the same on the Mac. Um, so we have customized everything. You know, every button, slider, uh, shaded area, item view, you name it, is custom graphics. Um, there's obviously a music player application, but whatever. And in, in some maps, actually, it might be the easiest solution. Don't target Mac or Windows or Linux just go completely wild. But this was a lot of work. Uh, it'll be a lot easier with uh, Qt5 desktop components, though still some issues. Uh, it's entirely valid. You can't easily mix and match it as a problem. You can't do half this way and half unstyled. Uh, but it, it's definitely a simple possibility, and it dodges the Mac issue very neatly. You will still get people moaning. It doesn't have a Mac UI on the Mac, but fewer. So that, yeah, that's, I guess, another option. If you're at the beginning of your product, you might justify. So that was basically a, a series of problems uh, and probably an insight into the Mac, Mac user psyche that you, may, that you may or may not agree with. Um, so what we should look at now is some actual solutions and also discuss sort of, you know, some tangible problems. So yes, well, we've seen some specific problems. We'll have a look at some actual things you can improve, which would be useful. So there's a shopping list here of things you can tune. Some of them are better, some of them are worse. Uh, and these are specific things. But I guess, again, I keep coming back to the meta point is think about your UI. And then th these are the things that your users won't tell you because they didn't realize that I'm going to tell you because you know, I have some more experience of you know, what, what things are actually going wrong. Um, so that unfortunately, no user will ever tell you that your, your spacing on your borders is wrong, or most users won't. Uh, but these, these, these we're going to go through each in more detail. The very first one I said, and the very easiest one, is the unified toolbar. Uh, ignore the fact that Safari also has a second toolbar, but the toolbar is a thing with the buttons in it and the address bar. Um, and it's attached to the window. There's no separate line. Oh, big deal. OK, there's, there's two pixels and a line missing, but that's straight away a queue on non-native application using unified toolbar. This is, a, this is a classic example. It's simply a, a set of function. Set unified toolbar, on queue toolbar, switches it on, and it works. Uh, the next bigger problem with toolbars is the Mac has this editing UI, which is completely standard, to basically have a palette of things. And you can drag and drop these into the toolbar. They insert dynamically. You can add, uh, oh, it hasn't got them. There's normally you can add in flexible space, a bit like designer, actually, but it's a user feature. Uh, and this is a this standard thing drops down from the toolbar. You can drag on the default set here. And Qt doesn't have this UI. You could fake it using Qt. Or we should probably investigate providing as an optional extra a Mac toolbar editing dialog that you can just, just call up. Uh, but we don't have that at the moment. And building that from Qt would obviously be possible, but quite a bit of work. Um, interesting points. So this obviously, these map quite well to Qt actions. I mean, these are, this is basically a widget or an action that you can drag into a toolbar. So Qt's kind of almost got the right structure to support this. Um, and obviously, other operating systems also let you edit toolbars in a different way. So you can imagine some kind of platform abstraction for this. But excuse me, Qt doesn't have that at the moment. A few more little topics. Uh, this toolbar isn't draggable. There's no handle at that side. Sorry, I should point. There's no handle there to move it around. It can't go at the bottom or the left. It can only go at the top. You can hide it, but that's about all. Oh, it has some standard other UI, uh, which again, you can't see here. So this just has an icon. There's no text underneath. There's a global setting for that in system preferences, and there's usually an application level setting as well. But again, 
Mac is expect you can configure uh, text underneath or just icons or just text as an option. They expect your program to follow the default for that. If you don't, they will dislike you. Oh, and the other guess thing about toolbars, ignoring this, the fact that Safari has bookmarks bar, there's only one toolbar. So what I meant about le less is more. We'll come with that in more detail with main window, but you can't have 20 toolbars on the Mac. I mean, it'll work. Qt will have to make it work for you, but no Mac program would ever have more than one toolbar. So... <laughs> Um, the next really important one is framing. Uh, you've been framed as a British TV show, so British joke, ignore that. Uh, the Mac UI minimizes framing and borders, uh, and more so over time. So we used to have a window border, we now have nothing, not even a one pixel line, we have no border on the windows. They have a drop shadow around them, but that's it. Uh, and not just framing on the windows, but also around widgets and groups and boxes. So we generally don't have four pixel gaps or 10 pixel gaps. We have single pixel lines or maybe nothing. Uh, and that's in complete contrast to, for example, Windows 2K. Uh, and there's also few of those 3D highlight effects that everyone did in Windows 95 or Windows 2000 had all these, everything had a 3D highlight, right? And the emphasis on Mac is flatness now possibly with a gradient background, but certainly no kind of hard edges and as minimal a border or spacing as possible around a lot of things. And that means for the classic example is that if you nest a queue box, group box or queue frame, the results look terrible. Uh, they look so terrible, I have a demo. <laughs> Which is here. Um, Okay, I guess you would say it doesn't look that bad. I mean, okay, but no Mac program would ever nest group boxes for this reason. Um, but the problem is that, on, particularly on Linux, people start creating UIs and they're like, oh, I want to group these, I want to group these. And there's almost already too much UI in this dialogue. Not quite, but I mean, because it's spaced out badly. Uh, but straight away, this is going to look crap on the Mac. Uh, I actually had a picture somewhere. I think I've don't have it right now, of this in the Windows style. In the Windows style, it also looks bad. It just looks less bad. And in, in, in the, um, the Platinum style, whatever it was that, you know, cute four ships with, it looks plausible. Um, so really here, the Mac, the Mac is a hint that you've got a bad UI design that's being made worse by the, the, by, you know, the, the way the Mac deals with that, the, that choice of widgets. So for example, what you might do on the Mac is change your queue frames to just plain queue widgets and give them no, no border. Uh, I mean, so when I said there's few 3D highlight effects, this is partly, I, I don't mean there's fewer 3D effects. Of course, Mac has lots of drop shadows and highlights, uh, but they're usually more subtle. They're not the classic Q horizontal line, dark and white lines contrasting. They're usually more subtle and they're often they're done by the OS. So if you try and do them yourselves, you'll usually look not as good as, as users expect. Uh, that, that's another example of animations that don't look smooth will get you moaned about. Another detail, dialogue parenting. Uh, on the Mac, modal dialogues hang off and crucially animate in and out of their parents, whether well, that's called a sheet. Uh, if you set uh, the modality and parenting correctly on a queue dialogue, it will do the right thing. Uh, and again, the animation for this is can, it's done by the window manager, it all happens, so you know, as far as you know, you're just painting your widget, whatever appears, appears immediately, actually it's been animated in a nice uh, effect on the GPU, it smoothly pulls out of here, yep. If that just appeared floating over the window as a modal dialogue, that instantly feels non mac -y. A hard one to explain, unfortunately, or hard one to give a concrete example of. Um, but the layouts and spacing changes a lot. So the human interface guidelines define, you know, some ideas of, you know, spacing between buttons. I mean, I, I don't have the exact uh, number figured, but for example, the Mac guidelines say something like between two push buttons, there must be 19 pixels, or maybe it's 17. I've forgotten, but it's a, it's a fixed number. And of course, in a queue layout, you can put any spacing you like between two buttons, you know, big, small, stretched, who knows. Uh, but the Mac guidelines say that shall be 17 pixels or 21, 
some, some constant. And similarly around and many other elements. So if you're just using queue layouts, you'll get lots of violations of those kind of rules. So of course, you can um, Qlet gives you control over this. Uh, you can set margins, border spacing, and crucially, you can do that in a style sheet. So a possibility you might consider is to make a custom style sheet in CSS and load that on the Mac. And then in that, tell it that queue layout border is one pixel rather than the default of eight, I think. Uh, and that the left-hand margin on a push button is 19 pixels, for example. Uh, and so on. And, and you basically end up with a large Mac-only CSS file that you load into the NIF def when your program starts that would tweak all your sizes and spacing, maybe, um, maybe only for some widgets. Maybe you can't do it by class name. Maybe you have to do it by individual object names. Um, that would be global, that, and that's quite a nice solution, but it may not work depending on how your app's structured. And then we get stuck into the rapidly becoming more work options. So something that might work is use a different UI file on the Mac. I mean, your you, UI file is just code. You could have a UI, UI Mac and a UI you know, Linux or UI non-Mac and load a different one in an if def. So same widgets, hopefully, but different UI file. It could have you know, different structure, uh, but presumably you can connect, connect up the same signals and slots uh, to whatever, whatever your business logic is, but you, can, you could completely rearrange the structure on the Mac. Uh, that, now you're maintaining two UI files rather than one. Your workload is going up. Your testing has become harder. Uh, there's many drawbacks, but now you can have a completely custom UI for that window, that dialog on the Mac. Uh, and one absolute kicker example is stretching widgets, especially buttons. So the default Mac buttons don't stretch, they get more space. If, uh, and there's nothing looks worse and more obviously acute mistake than a push button that's been stretched this wide, or heaven forbid, stretched vertically, because it's, they just don't ever do that in a real Cocoa application. You will never see it. Uh, the buttons are usually tightly fitted unless they're aligned up with some other element, but they don't ever scratch and stretch and squeeze like that. So again, this comes back to your default layout model you dragged on with your V-boxes, your grid layouts, your, your spacing values might be absolutely fine on most platforms, but it might be generating things, especially when you resize, that look visually wrong on the Mac. And so you can, you can, you can certainly control that. Qt gives you all the knobs and dials and properties and settings to tweak it. But you've got to get them in on the Mac and then obviously test that and maintain that. So building on that, there is a sizing problem or a, a sizing issue. Uh, most, well, all widgets in Qt, including the Mac style ones, are fully resizable. You know, you're used to put your widget to layout, checkbox, group, whatever, and you can resize them, and they'll, you know, they have a minimum size, a size hint, and so forth. Uh, but you know, in general, if you want a button 20 pixels high, 24 pixels high, 30 pixels, that's all possible values. Uh, that was not the philosophy in the Mac design. The Mac design is we have three sizes. <laughs> uh, we have regular, which is the largest. There might be some American thinking happening there. Uh, so the default is regular, which is the largest. Uh, and then there's a small size and an even smaller size. Um, and fortunately, you can get at these. Uh, so normal, small, and mini. You can set these. These are widget flags you can set on any widget, uh, a, a button or a checkbox or so forth. And they're smaller. But because the default size is large, this is partly why you tend to fill up space more. So the classic example find is that you, know, you design your UI file, and your dialog is 800 pixels wide, and it contains some tabs, a list view, some checkboxes. You run it on the Mac, and everything looks squashed, or it has to be resized to be bigger. Because that Q, that Q push button on the Mac's minimum size might be 10 pixels higher and considerably wider for the rounded ends. Uh, so the Mac widgets are just chunkier. And Apple realized that as well. The, the, these small sizes didn't exist in the very beginning. They were added on in 10.3 and 10.4. They started to appear. Because Apple also realized that you know, they were just a little bit too big for a lot of needs. So they're simply, rather than being a fixed height of you know, 24 pixels, they are 19 pixels high. And particularly, the mini ones are really quite mini. They're quite compact. Uh, but the, the small size is actually you know, often closer to the window size than the normal one. Um, but uh, Qt doesn't set these for you automatically. You set these by hand. There's a little caveat there. Uh, I was looking through the star code on Mac, actually, writing this talk. There's some code in there, written by Sam, who did a lot of the Mac work, um, 
And he, and I, I, he had tried what I was wondering about, which is to look at the actual size of the widget it's been given by the layout manager, and then based on that, pick one of these three constants. Um, and the problem is that looks worse, because the Apple rule is you only use one size in a given window. So in a particular dialogue or palette or whatever, you, they're all mini or they're all small or they're all normal. And obviously, if you just worked it out based on the widget's individual size, you get a mixture of all three in each window, and that looks visually appalling. Uh, there is a little bit of classic case of the Q style code being complex. If the parent window is a Q doc widget, it defaults to the small size, not the normal one. Because obviously, someone worked out that you know, doc widgets are normally floating palettes. They normally have lots of buttons in them and small things. So we'll default to the small size. That's a heuristic built into Q style Mac. Um, what you probably want to do is pick these explicitly. And in particular, if it's a, you know, a toolbar that's got lots of uh, combo boxes in it, for example, or some property palette, you might want to pick the small size. And you'll make your life a lot easier when you come to port your UI files from another platform. And then we have, uh, let's talk about widgets here. This is, so that was all about arrangement of widgets and, and tweaking things you could tweak in uh, a UI file or a CSS file. Now into things you might have changed real code. So the first one is avoid widgets the Mac doesn't have, which means uh, Q dial, Q tool buttons a bit. I mean, of course, you have buttons in toolbars, but a Q tool button not in a toolbar looks wrong, just completely wrong. Uh, there's Q dial, a few other those other widgets just don't use them in the Mac, don't use them. Uh, another cl classic um, function that's very was added for the Mac, this Q tab bar document mode gives you a tab bar that looks like Safari rather than Excel. If you're doing document tabs on the Mac, use it, you get the right appearance. It's one of those, you know, kind of, it's just there, switch it on. Um, Q push button set flat is useful to make buttons less, take up less space, but we'll talk about buttons in a bit more detail. And then we're going to start getting to more work. These are basically increasing amounts of work. The next thing is that on the map, we have a thing called the segmented button control. Looks like this. It's basically like radio buttons, but it's more compact. You can pick one of these things. Um, and we don't have anything like that in Qt. You can obviously make it. It's just a widget. You could paint this. You obviously have some fixed maps. You pick one of these things. Uh, you can make a custom widget and then use that. And obviously, you, then you decide, do we make the same widget for Linux and Windows and maintain that? Or do we use a, just if def that on the Mac we have this widget and something else on, on Linux Windows? Who knows? Um, so that's, that's writing a custom Q widget. And another option you've got here is Q Mac Cocoa View Container. And this is kind of you know the really powerful option. This lets you wrap a real Mac control in a Q widget. So this thing here, uh, like this screenshot from Safari, is a NS segmented button control. I think, uh, yeah, and a segmented controller button control, one of the two. And you could potentially wrap that in this QMAC Cocoa Manor. You need to somehow intercept Cocoa events, generate signals from them, uh, handle some sizing issues. It's a non-trivial amount of work. But then you're not faking a, a Mac widget. You're just asking Cocoa to go and draw the widget for you. But once again, what do you do on the Linux Windows? Do you ifdef? Do you have a different UI file? Who can say? There's one more example at the bottom here. Um, classic example of less is more in, U, in UI. The Mac tab bar doesn't do multiple rows. So I, del I put in here some tabs with long names, and it does this, which is unusable, completely unusable. So don't make dialogues that have 20 tabs. Four tabs is enough for anybody. Um, if you have a dialogue with 20 tabs, your UI design is broken. Um, that, and I'm being very dictatorial here, but really, why have you got 20 tabs? I mean, if you have more than four tabs, a tab bar isn't the right piece of UI to be using. You want a scrolling list at the side or a palette or something else. I mean, I mean, this is unusable on the Mac. On Windows and Linux, it stacks up tabs, but it's still bad for the human being that has to use it. It, it works better, but it's not a good UI solution. Specifically talking about buttons, I said to come back to. The Mac has many additional styles of button besides the default Q push button. Um, some of these you'll see more like that actually looks like the classic Mac one you'd never use. But it's got little play buttons. These all have different degrees of framing around them, a little bit more shadow. This one's a bit like a Q tool button. So do I mean that this looks a bit like a Q tool button, but only has a one pixel shadow, not a two pixel shadow, or three. 
Um, this is, yeah, let's skip over that one. This has a very subtle gradient around it. This one is a bit a different. Gradient. These two at the bottom, inline and recessed, are being used increasingly uh, for kind of disclosure areas and uh, mouse over type buttons that you might see. These are all different kinds of, these are basically different, a different enum configuration on NS button. Um, and Q push button does none of these, unfortunately, which is a problem. Uh, and, and so Q push button is usually, the default Q push button looks like what we would use for a dialogue OK button on the Mac, but that's not usually used in many other places. It, it's one of these choices. So the good thing is you could go back, like I said on the previous slide, and wrap these in Q Mac Cocoa View container. But someone's already done that. Um, there's a thing called Quoco, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, um, which essentially is some prefabbed, wrapper, wrapped up NS controls wrapped up in the Mac view container for you. And it's just some header files you can include in your project. Uh, it's on GitHub, you can check it out, the license is friendly, you can feel free to extend it. Uh, the maintainer is a former colleague of mine, he's kind of a dick, but you know, he's a Mac user, so what do you expect? Um, <laughs> He left to go and work for, you know, become a web hipster and work on Ruby. So clearly his brain has been addled by too much, you know, cocoa usage or something. Um, but yes, uh, but he created this and it's, I mean, it's all it is, is what you would do yourself, wrapping up things in Mac view container, but at least he's done it for you, which is going to save you a bit. And also if you want an example of how to wrap up a different control, for example, segmented one in this and do it right, you go and look at, uh, Quoco and get some good examples and some ideas how you might go about that. And it does do one clever thing. Um, the wrappers have a non-Mac fallback. So if, if you ask for any of these on Linux and Windows, you get a regular Q push button and it just works, which is good. Um, because that's easy for push button. For the segmented control, it's less clear what you do. Are we gonna basically, are we gonna essentially add this to Qt as a built-in widget or, or some other possibility, who knows? Uh, other example, this is an area where things rapidly, unfortunately, get painful, but we'll be better in Qt 5. Um, item views. Uh, the Mac, at the moment, is emphasizing composite list items over big tables. So we're, and we're avoiding lots of columns of data and having uh, fatter things that convey multiple, what would be either columns or roles in your model in a list thing where each item is quite chunky. And that's, and that's an artifact of how, particularly on iOS, but also in general on the Mac, the Mac equivalent of item views works a bit of a different way. And so what we call a delegate in the item view system is easier to customize. And in particular, you can basically build a UI file that's called an interface builder zip file for each cell. And the item view system on Coco will automatically build you instances of that cell and link them up automatically and reclaim them and destroy them and other things. So it's very common to graphically design one cell uh, on the Mac and then build UIs out of list of them. And on obviously Qt, that's hard. In Qt 5, if you could do this using a QML list view, this would be much easier. So this, this, so this will get easier with Qt 5 desktop components because this can be a QML list view containing you know, rich stuff. These can be text views and so forth. But on Qt 4 and C++, you basically need to write, write a custom delegate that does more drawing and acts as more roles, which, I, which, I, which you can do. I mean, writing a delegate that, you know, reads out four values or four columns and paints this is not too hard. Um, you can, I mean, you can still do a table. iTunes has one, but they're just becoming much less common. Don't do a tree. There's, there's almost no tree views on the Mac anymore anywhere. Um, and the tree view doesn't look very Mac-y anyway. It looks, it looks plausibly Mac-like, but they're just so out of fashion as UI. I mean, there are tree, tree views in a few places. The cute one looks a bit like it. Uh, with some tweaking, it can look a bit more like the Mac tree view, but I would just stay away if you can. Um, one more kicker, there's a standard Mac UI for ad adding, removing, editing, this plus minus buttons here. And again, you can fake these with Q tool buttons, but it doesn't look quite right. They need to be actually, they're really part of the widget. They're glued inside the widget frame pretty directly. And when you select things here, they light up and change. And again, you can, f you can fake this, but ideally this would be a built-in widget. Um, oh yeah, one other warning, the default table views, header views look wrong. 
they look like Excel and nothing else on the Mac looks like that. So definitely replace your header views with something better on the Mac in your tables. Uh, <laughs> so that was a huge list of bottom up. You've already got your code small fixes and there's more this is like some illustrative examples of you know you could build this with Qt. it's not a big deal but it's a change it's more it's different code of course everything i've said this might be a better ui on linux who knows than, than, a, than a regular q table view i mean this is all ui that might work on other platforms as well but on the mac you might need to do it so that, that was some moats some problems we're having some bottle ways to fix them what i'm going to talk about now uh, is if you're starting from fresh, what you would actually like to be doing um, or want to do something much more radical. So instead of trying to fix your Qt program design on Linux, what you should really do is design a Mac UI from scratch. Actually, you shouldn't do that at all. You should design a UI from scratch. You should start from a clean slate, get a user experience designer in, get your users in, put your coders, uh, I don't know, send them off to play paintball for the day, and then design a user interface without any coders in the room. Um, they kind of won't like that, but you'll get a better user interface. Um, and once you've got a UI, UI design that really encompasses what your app should do, work out which bits actually, in terms of user experience, cross-platform. Of course, it's cute, or your business logic is going to be cross-platform, but who knows? I mean, maybe your dialogues are all cross-platform, but your toolbars aren't. Uh, maybe your, you've got a property panel that's cross-platform, but your way you want to handle palettes on the Mac is different to Linux and Windows. You need, only you can work that out by probably looking at all the Mac applications, looking at other applications in your business field, and so forth. And work out, there might be areas where the concepts are totally different on the Mac to other platforms. It, it just depends. And based on that, ideally, you would structure the application to share everything you can share, you know, share your dialog UI files, share your UI files or layouts for your palettes, and then somehow nicely abstract the platform bits so you don't have too many if defs. You'd have, you know, a Mac version of a few files, hopefully, and not mod. Um, even if you don't go through all of these steps, doing the first bit, having an actual, you know, sitting down and working out what's not Mac-like about your UI is valuable. Because at least then you have a, when we have more money or time, we'll go back and start adding this stuff. And also, you, you might avoid designing in things that are really hard to restructure to make the Mac look nicer. So it, it's worth thinking about it even if you can't justify the expense of spending the engineering time doing it, it'll help you. A big one of that is your main window, because it's usually the main window that differs the most. Uh, dialogues are usually le less of an issue, you spend less time looking at them. And unfortunately, Q main window is almost working against you here, because dock widgets, uh, movable toolbars, status bars, and heaven forbid MDI are all wrong on the Mac. <laughs> um, yeah, we were, they're just, they're just, so all those things you get for free in QMain window don't look very Mac-like, um, especially movable toolbars, uh, MGI never, and the dock widget appearance looks like Windows, so it looks like Visual Studio. So all those features, I switched them off on the Mac. <laughs> um, so a very likely thing is that all your dialogues are shared, but you have a separate main window on the Mac, which is totally Mac-specific. Um, obviously, or, or you might still be painting widgets, which are doing their painting the same as Windows or Linux. But the, that top level application structure might be the, the key area. And obviously, you should have to maximize your return here. So if, if your users are mostly looking at the main window all the time and they use a dialogue you know, once a day, that's a good trade-off, right? Then most of the time, the UI is Mac-specific and the, you know, the little dialogue box they use once a week, it's less important. It looks a little bit like Windows. Um, there's a kicker here. Uh, since Mac OS 7, we have a good full screen mode. Uh, and on all the app applications, it's intelligent. So it really works out what UI features you do and don't need in full screen. And we can support the button in Qt, thanks to some little widget style patches. Uh, but what you actually do in full screen mode is up to you. Essentially, it might be, again, a totally different reconfiguration of your UI. Different toolbars, different palettes, different visual arrangement. Who knows? So you, again, you need to think about this. Engage your brain first, work out what would make sense on a good full screen mode, and then see if you can make it happen. There's another radical option. You could not use Qt for your main window. <laughs> uh, you could create your main window using Cocoa, uh, which is a possibility, and then populate it with Cocoa widgets and Qt widgets wrapped up. So you can go the other way. You can embed Cocoa widgets in a Qt widget. You can wrap up a Qt widget or a complete hierarchy 
an entire dialogue or window in a QMAC widget and expose it directly to Coco. And if you want to, you can get clever. Uh, Interface Builder, IB, is the equivalent of designer for, for Coco. You can start exposing palettes of Q widgets uh, to Interface Builder if you wanted and doing things visually. That depends if you have Mac exp expertise, people who want to use Interface Builder to create those UIs. And again, I mean, all your business logic, all your painting code could still be QPainter, uh, you know, Q Network Socket, who knows, uh, any, anything like, you know, QML views, but you're just creating whatever structure you need for the user interface using the right tool for the job, which might be Coco, potentially. So that was like the, the scary top-down changes. A few more deployment ecosystem ones. So apart from how it looks, Mac users now have some other expectations. They want to get your stuff through the store and update it that way. They might expect, if you're in the consumer space, iCloud storage. And say, as I was mentioned, they want a really good full screen mode. Um, and the problem is, this is all a moving target, because Apple keep on adding new stuff. Um, so App Store was an optional thing. 10.8 App Stores become recommended. Um, and other features have become mandatory. And going forward, if you want to increase your sales on the Mac, you're going to need to be in the App Store. Uh, and that's going to mean some work from you, some work from Qt, some other pieces, some of which we've already done and committed. Other pieces are going to take more time. Uh, in particular, on the App Store, you need to be code signed. Uh, code signing isn't too bad. We'll talk about that in more detail. You can only access files in your sandbox. You can't start opening up random files on the disk. That will get you forbidden. Ideally, you would use iCloud for your document storage, which is hard. And um, again, we'll talk about it in more detail. You can't download code or scripts. This is the issue that Lars referenced uh, earlier, why they have some problem with uh, iOS deployment. The basically Apple are anxious to avoid people downloading code at runtime, which does nasty stuff. So in theory, um, for example, you, you, if, you, if, if you're downloading a, you know, Q scripts using Network Access Manager and running them, you're breaking the App Store guidelines. Probably that will never get picked up on, but you should be aware that uh, there's many potential scenarios involving dynamic code that you could potentially run foul of. Um, but the good thing is, though, that if you go through these steps, you get updates for free. So your cost of um, selling and updating just got lower because Apple will manage your, your file server and your downloads for you. Um, so that's a good feature. Um, so you're getting some features. You have to go and fit to the Apple model, of course. Um, but increasingly, you aren't going to get any sales if you don't do this, because that's going to be the first people go to. They're going to they're look for a Twitter client or music client or game or time tracker or, or accounting tool in the App Store. And they're going to pick the one with the highest number of reviews on the App Store and buy it. And that's going to be their model for getting software. So if your app has bad reviews because it looks like a cute app, you get, you get no sales. There was no point. If your app uh, is getting good reviews, you'll probably win. If not in the store at all, you might get no sales. Uh, a few more details. Code signing costs you $100 a year. That's worth it, I would say. You have to prove you're a human being, and you need to sign your final COBA certificate. That's just code signing. Not too big a deal. Um, iCloud storage is a big problem. Uh, iCloud storage means totally different file dialogues, and it works through some Cocoa APIs we don't have exposed in Qt. Um, so if you want to do iCloud storage, you might need to rewrite quite a bit of your document logic uh, for the Mac, which is maybe impossible. So again, if you're starting now, think about this. Um, so it might really affect you know, business logic level functions. You can't retrofit it into QIO device to make it store to iCloud. It doesn't work that way. What it is, Coco has a notion of a document and document controller at a fundamental level. And things like recent files and history are all managed by Coco automatically. And there's no Q document manager or Q document base class to hook that stuff into on the Mac. So iCloud is going to be exciting. And uh, the only thing that might happen, I'm based again what we're saying, I'm talking about Lars, if there's support for other cloud-like storage systems in the future, there may be a unified API over all of them. We'll see. Some closing remarks. Uh, the earlier you think about UI, the easier this stuff is. The later you leave it, the harder it is. Um, really important one here. I didn't ask when I had my show of hands who loves the Mac, because I would put my hand up, but most of you have probably been like, love the Mac? Are you weird? Um, it helps the most if the person on your, working on your Mac pro, pro, program is a Mac person. I mean, deeply, passionately cares about the Mac. 
that will make the biggest difference by far because then, then, then they've got the built-in feel in their brain for what looks wrong. Um, and this is just me being cheeky. Um, don't be afraid of if defs that say if def mac do it better because that's what you're going to end up with. Um, and don't be afraid to say we're going to throw out half the UI on the Mac because we don't need it. Do, do really think different. Do actually say what do we need here, what's the same, and what can we change? Uh, because that is the, the meta, meta point here. Think about your UI, and when someone complains on the Mac, understand what they're really complaining about. Uh, some questions. Oh, one other comment. If you are really stuck by this thing, even one thing I should say, you could always pay me to fix your Mac UI because I'm a consultant. So, you know, <laughs> I, might, I might tell you your UI is terrible. That happens. Okay. Every client I've been into, I've told them their UI is terrible. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Oh. Uh, just a small one. Um, you said you shouldn't use tree views. Yeah. But well, avoid. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there an alternative? Should you use column view or should you just restructure the, your data? The traditional next step thing would have been to use a column view rather than a tree view. The problem is that column view exists in Qt, but Apple isn't pushing column views either. Apple using a tree view where they have to, like an aperture for the list of albums. A finder. Um, Ignore no, fine, ah, sorry. Don't look at the Finder or Safari as examples of applications. They're not. <laughs> um, Safari and the Finder don't count for the purpose of this discussion because they get changed every release based on fashion. Um, so ignore. So for doing what Safari does won't help you because you'll be wrong in two years' time. Look at Aperture or Keynote or Pages or the Pro apps or the apps that cost money, not at, not at Safari and Finder um, because there's yeah, there's, there's special issues around the Finder and Safari, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, there are lots of tree views. The cute one looks OK, and with some tweaking, you know, alternating background colors, change the head of views, hopefully not a custom delegate, it'll look plausible. Uh, it's, it's just being emphasized. The, the other thing is we're converging on iOS type UIs. The full screen mode is the start of that, and iOS doesn't have a tree view at all. It has drill down. So I would favor, ideally, list views which support drill down, if possible. Um, that's like the modern touch-friendly UI because tree views are unusable on the touch screen. They're too yeah. fiddly. Yeah. Um, but again, if on a pro app, a tree view probably does still make sense. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.